Tips and Tricks, Part 8. Broken Cards. Okay, so let's look at the qualities of broken cards. 1. Unlimited use of effects. 2. No disadvantages. And 3. Creates FTKs. Okay, 1. Unlimited use of effects. We see this with old school cards. There are cards built in Yu-Gi-Oh's first few years of existing. Here is one such example of such a card. Grinder Google. Okay, so let's go to Grinder Golem, which is a level 8 fiend, Dark Monster, and read its effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by special summoning. Two Grinder tokens, fiend type. Dark level 1, attack 0, and defense 0. In face of attack position on your side of the field. If you special summon this monster, you cannot normal summon or set a monster during the same turn. So essentially, what this card does is you can keep on special summoning it, as it says there. You know, if your opponent, you know, has two Grander Monster Golems. So this was ex this, you know, Grander Monster, you know, tokens, Grander Monster tokens, which it produces on its summon. Oh yeah, sure the restriction is that you can't, uh, you know, normal summon this turn, but that doesn't really matter, especially when we entered the link format where tokens now you know could be used as part of a link summon so you could special summon for days and on end so yeah this is really is so you know it's just a card that was is extremely you know broken as it has unlimited its if effect usage is just unlimited it can be used in a limited amount of times Okay, two, no disadvantages. Where is the cost or disadvantage that's on the card? Isn't really a disadvantage. At best, it's a minor problem, barely significant. Here's an example of a card that has what I'm talking about. It's called Sky Striker Mobilizing Gate. So let's um, you know zoom into it and just talk about it a bit more. Here I go. Okay, so in front of you, you can see Sky Striker Mobilizing Gate. So Sky Strike Mobilize Engage is a normal spell card, and so let's read that effect. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, add one Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand, except Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. Then if you have three or more spells in your graveyard, you can draw one card. So yeah, so let's go back to you know the thing I was saying before. So no disadvantages. So let's go back to uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage again. And as you can see there. That, where is the disadvantage of this card? Well, yeah, it can be activated if you control no monsters, but is that really a disadvantage? Is that really a minus here? I don't think so. Because, this, you know, it really isn't, you know. Uh, you can activate, you know, spells, you know, all the time. Quick plays, normal spells can be activated on your turn, and in any phase. So, it really doesn't matter. And the fact that you get actually an incentive to have three spells in your graveyard means that just one activation of an engage means you get a draw. So in fact, that minus that it's so-called put there actually turns to be a plus because it encourages you to use more spells. So yeah, this is an example of a card with seemingly no disadvantage at all. Now, we do have, there is a card similar to this that we've had you know, in the past, uh, which was um, you know, Spiral Quick Fix. Now, Spiral Quick Fix, again, is another broken card. Don't get it twisted. But Konami did try to balance it somewhat, in some way, in by, you know, because uh, Spiral Quick Fix's effect was that as long as it is a special summon, you can add any Spiral card from your deck to your hand. And its effect was, was that you can, you can discard a card to special summon it from the graveyard. However, when it's special summoned by its own effect, it banishes itself. Now, yes, it doesn't have a once per turn clause, but it, you know, but the Konami tried to balance it, right, by having it, you know, banish itself when it leaves the field, so you wouldn't be able to use its effect multiple times. But the problem with that is that what Konami failed to realize is that XYZ monsters exist, so it could just be used as overlay, uh, overlay material for an XYZ monster, detached 
you know, from comments that the monsters for Venom Extreme, and the whole process could repeat once again, because again, it was a one to turn, and there was no disadvantages. So, it was a minor inconvenience that could be mitigated, no problem. Okay, with that being said, let's go to the last point of Broken Cards. Okay, so we have a game of three, creates FPKs and OTKs. I'm going to split a true fact. Whenever a monster that copies effects or similar effects on multiple monsters, FPKs and OTKs are created. Always. This is inevitable. Here's a monster that is banned but follows this trend. I also want to apologize for the current other things you know I've done where my head is cut off. I was trying a new style where I wanted to you know to zoom in on that but I saw it was just cutting off you know my you know my head so it's just it's not really work. So I'm just gonna stick to you know doing it this way uh, for now. So that being said let's move on to the next uh, you know to, to that card there and we'll talk. Okay so we have Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom a level eight dark fusion monster so let's read uh, that effect. So you need two dark pleasure monsters to make it. So already it's a really easy monster to make. But let's continue. Must either be fusion summon or special summon or to be the above points you control. In which case we have use for magician. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let me get this straight. We can you can make this monster without the need of polarization and the materials get sent to the extra deck. Holy moly, this is just way too easy to make. Okay, let's just read on with that effect. Once per turn, you can target one other monster on the field or in the graveyard until the end falls. This card's name becomes that monster's original name and replace this effect with that monster's original effects. Also for the rest of this turn, if your monster attacks a defense version monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. So let me get this straight. We have a monster that can become any monster that is on the field or graveyard. It does piercing damage. This one. Like, can it win you the, can it like, you know, like do your taxes and just pay your rent too? Like, what is this? This is way too much on a monster, right? Like, this is just screaming to be a dude. You know, any card that allows you to copy other cards' effects is just going to cause so many problems in the game. You know, copying effects is just a broken ability. Always has been. Whether it's, the, whether it's in a card game, whether it's in a video game, whatever kind of thing it is, copying is the simplest, most broken thing you can, a game mechanic you can put in, in a game. And with that being said, right, of course, you know, it's going to be banned, of course, it's just too strong, too broken. Um, we don't see cards like this being produced anymore, thank goodness. So hopefully, we won't see a card like this again, but this is the example, as I was saying, of cards that uh, you have created FDKs and FDKs. Um, we do have another old card that does have an effect that does copy cards, it's Draco Equisite, you know, but anyways, I digress, uh, whether that's going to get popular use, you know, who knows. Okay, that's it. I believe we've come to the end of this video, so yeah. we come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel. And uh, wait a couple of minutes and your seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.